Hello everybody, welcome, welcome back to the dig site, and today we are back with another video. I know it's been like, what, five days since we last posted? It's been quite a while. It's been almost five weeks. Ah. That's not good. Anyway, um, we're back. Yes, I know it's been a long time, but... We are here, and what better way to kickstart the channel once again, you know, get those views back up, than doing a trailer reaction. And yes, I know, as you can see behind me, if I was actually center with the camera, as you can see behind me, Transformers 1. That has nothing to do with dinosaurs, you may ask. Well, apart from the Dinobots, but that's really it. About a year ago, I made a video reacting to Transformers Rise of the Beast. And in that video, I stated that I was going to be trying to push a little bit more Transformers content out, except I never did, because this is mainly a dinosaur channel, so there was really no point for me to also include Transformers, except for the two trailers that I reacted to. But, you know, uh, I need content, and I'm currently in the middle of a script for an upcoming Jurassic Park Band Mysteries episode, so, stay tuned for that. And I think that's basically it. So without wasting any more time, let's watch this trailer, shall we? Let's go. So, how long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. Megatron's voice is interesting. You know what? We are so screwed! Thought you weren't talking to me. You two, come with me. Report to waste management. Hi there, I'm B127. Yeah. I'm actually working on some nicknames. The the one I'm floating right now is um Tron, which is actually pronounced Tron. Twice? Um, we're gonna call you B. Okay, cursing. In this film especially? That's interesting. I know we're just lowly worker bots who can't even transform. Don't you want to see what's out there? Where was Megatron? There's a reason no one goes to the surface. To the surface. D16. It's dangerous! Why'd you bring jetpacks? Uh, if we survive this, I'm gonna kill you! I accept those terms. Yourself worthy. Take these. Is that Alpha Trial? Your full potential. Oh. It's time to show them we are more than meets the eye. Yeah, there it is. We can transform now. Yeah, it's Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Where's my head? How do we use these things? Oh, look at the wheels! I need wheels! <gasps> Woo! Uh, guys, that's what? not good. The Quintessons. We've got these powers for a reason. Let's use them. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was we actually stand pretty... here together. As one. Uh, Starstream. Whoa! I got a battle mask! It appeared with this guy. Knife hands? I have knife hands! I can see that. B, these are not the bad guys. Why did you cut the door? What? No, it was already like that. Right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes. It was. Yeah, yes. it was already mm -hmm. like. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, certainly an interesting film or trailer to say the least. 
But uh, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Starting off in the first scene, we get Orion Pax in D16, better known as Optimus Prime and Megatron. From the dialogue, we can assume that Orion Pax must have done something pretty stupid to get them to this point. Honestly, it seems like they're in detention. Now, I'm assuming this is near the beginning of the movie, since the scene right after we see some Cybertronian pick them up and drop them to waste management. Noticing how they act, the director and writers have made their relationship brotherly-like, which is honestly great. And I would just like to quickly talk a little bit about the overall animation. I mean, it's nice. It sort of reminds me of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse animation. I don't know if that's just me or what. And I can't help but notice that the designs of the characters remind me of the Transformers Earth Spark. And, uh, well. You always knew how to make an entrance, Megs. <laughs> I'll kill you! David! Another thing that I noticed is that D16 has the Decepticon logo on his left shoulder. Now, I assume that symbol must have some other meaning at this point, potentially maybe being the mark of the worker class or something. Either way, I have a feeling that D16 is going to have some sort of special feeling towards this symbol, which obviously will result in him claiming it as the Decepticon symbol. Moving on to our first look at Bumblebee, it seems that he too is a low-level working class since he first meets D16 and Orion in the waste management area. He introduces his name as B-127, which confirms that this is a prequel to the Bumblebee movie. It's either that, or it's just a coincidence, but I doubt it. Just to let you guys know, the reason I blurred him from saying his lines is just because of the cursing, and I just don't want any type of swearing on the channel, so that's why I did it. Not because I can't stand swearing, it's just that I don't want it to be. And speaking of that, I do find it interesting that especially in an animated film such as this, you would believe that there wouldn't be any type of swearing, but I guess I was wrong. Then again, the voice actor is Keegan-Michael Key. I mean, what did you expect? Well, you better be sick, dead, or mute, A.A. Ron. Here. Oh, man. Why didn't you answer me the first time I said it, huh? Huh? I'm just, you know, I'm just asking, you know, I said it like four times, so why didn't you say it the first time I said A.A. Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron? Son of a and obviously, he will be the main comedian in this film, just like how Mirage was in Transformers Rise of the Beast. And I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I know that Bumblebee was always a funny character at some points, but he never made his whole personality as a comedian, like Mirage did. Autobots, roll out! After this, we get a bit of dialogue from Orion Pax stating that low-level working bots can't transform, which I find unique and interesting, showing that not all Transformers can transform. From the scene right here, it seems that most of these working bots jobs are to mine raw energon. In the scene after that, we see some more Cybertronians loading up what I can only guess is that same energon into crates onto a train. This train actually reminds me of that one mission in Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark, where you and the other Autobots have to defend yourselves long enough until a train arrives. Next, there's a little bit of back and forth talk between Orion and D16, where Orion wants to explore the surface, whereas D16 protests against that, saying it's too dangerous. I have a feeling that there is some rule that nobody is allowed to go onto the surface due to some false claims by their government. In the next few clips, we see D16 kneeling to inspect some Decepticon logo. This is obviously when they travel to the surface due to all the grass and vines. To me, this actually looks like the head of a long-lost Cybertronian warrior, maybe someone like Tarn. In the next clip, we quickly see a massive purple ship that looks like Nemesis from Transformers Prime, just a lot more alien-like. This is probably because the ship belongs to the Quintessons, as we can see in another shot, a Quintesson is floating down the ship's ramp, as well as torturing a Cybertronian in what seems to be the same surroundings. I believe this Cybertronian to be Sentinel Prime, because if Cybertronians aren't allowed to go to the surface, who has the power to break that rule? A Prime. It was also revealed that Sentinel Prime was going to appear in this movie. Ha, that's what you get for killing Ironhide. This circle that surrounds the large ship seems to be the train filled with supplies. I believe this hints at some shady trading where they give supplies to the Quintessons in return so that they don't destroy Cybertron. This could be the reason why no Cybertronian is allowed to go to the surface. A scene is shown where Orion and D16 use jetpacks to fly away from what seems to be a Cybertronian who transforms into a jet. This could potentially be the same Cybertronian who threw them to the waste management at the beginning of the trailer. At this point in the film, I believe they are trying to escape from the authorities due to breaking some law. 
Right after this, we get an intense shot where we see the whole cast of main characters with Alita 1 and Bumblebee now join Orion in D16. It would make sense that they snuck onto the train, but eventually were spotted, resulting in the train getting derailed, causing it to crash through the surface of Cybertron, throwing the crew into the air. Now, I'm not quite sure what the crystals shooting out of the ground are, the only thing I could think of was some sort of weapon or defensive measure, but other than that, I can't really think of any other explanation. On the surface of Cybertron, we see a variety of life, like these Cybertronian deer, which I find very odd. And, well, uh, oh. Well, I guess somebody doesn't like them very much. When the crew enters this mysterious cave, it seems to be almost like a graveyard, since we see many old Cybertronian warriors. This must be the same place where we saw D-16 looking at the large Decepticon symbol. This is where they encounter Alpha Trion. Wow, uh, what an interesting design. Alpha Trion will probably explain this place to the curious crew, and probably shed some light on what really is happening on the surface. After this, we see four glowing little mechanical orb things float up, being controlled by Alpha Trion as he places them in the crew's chest, saying that this will unlock their full potential. These are most likely T-Cogs. Now, T-Cogs are what give the Cybertronians the ability to transform and allow them access to weapons. This is probably a reference to the Transformers Prime, since they featured an episode dedicated to explaining the use, function, and importance of T-Cogs. These T-Cogs seem to fully change the young bots, gaining extra armor and accessories, which this shows us that the look they sport for the beginning portion of the movie is just their default appearance, just like in the Bayverse, where when the Autobots crashed on Earth, they looked like almost skeletons until they scanned their vehicle modes. Out of the four bots, I really like Megatron's design the best, with Bumblebee and Alita 1 tying for second place. The reason why I like Megatron's design the most is because I think it accurately represents the G1 version. Optimus Prime on the other hand, eh, I'm not too sure. After this, we get to see a funny part of the crew falling down the hill, clearly showing that it takes time and practice to fully learn how to use their transformation skills. As they fall, trying to figure out their new power, some drones spot them, which are probably the henchmen of the Quintessons, since we see them lined up when Sentinel Prime is being tortured. Also, I can't be the only one that thinks this shot right here, Orion Pax looks like Sideswipe. Just to quickly mention this shot, with what seems to be a massive entity, I believe that this is the Quintesson ship, but transformed. And as we can see, D16 and Orion Pax are in their default state, so clearly this is before they get their T-Cogs. Now, this is the interesting part of the trailer. First off, we see both Bumblebee and Alita 1 with Alpha Trion, and as you can see, both Orion Pax and D16 aren't present. All of them seem to be sad or almost betrayed. And this is because this part of the film is where Megatron has left the group, and Optimus followed, trying to stop his friend. I say this because right after, we see a massive battle ensue against the Quintesson drones, as well as some Decepticons. So, I believe that once Megatron left the crew, he sought out the Quintessons, deciding to either make a deal with them, or, like in classic Megatron fashion, putting them in their place, taking control of the drones. Taking a look at the final battle, it seems that it will take place on the surface, around the Quintesson ship. And, as you can see, there is a lot of fire and carnage. This quick shot right here seems to show a whole group of Decepticon Seekers getting caught in a fiery explosion, maybe caused by the Autobots or by an airstrike. Next we see Optimus Prime giving us flashbacks to the trailer for Transformers War for Cybertron, as he races up a makeshift ramp, transforming midair to collide with an oncoming Seeker. In the shot right after that, we get a quick look at our first official Decepticon, Arachnid who, by the looks of things, shares a close resemblance to the Transformers Prime design. Next, we see our first look at probably the three most iconic Decepticons, Soundwave, Shockwave, and Starscream, all standing beside each other. Shockwave, to me, seems to resemble the Transformers Fall of Cybertron design a little bit, just because of that abdomen piece and the obvious arm cannon. Overall, I really like his design. Next with Soundwave, eh, I'm not too sure about him. I mean, he does give G1 Soundwave a little justice, but to me, he quite honestly looks like a toy with really bad articulation. I don't know, maybe I just need to see more of him. And last but not least, Starscream. He looks... like his Transformers Earth Spark counterpart. Kill you! Stay back! No, all jokes aside, he looks really sleek, and I like that they folded his wings. 
Overall, I just hope he has his classic backstabbing personality. Better yet, hopefully we get to see Megatron using Starscream as a punching bag. To await my command. But enough talk about the designs, taking a look around the area, we see a throne behind Starscream. Now, this could be one of two locations. This could either be inside the Quintesson ship, after the Decepticons take over the vessel, killing all of the Quintessons, which would confirm my theory, or this most probably could be the cave where D16, Alita 1, Bumblebee, and Orion Pax got their upgrades from Alpha Trion, executing Alpha Trion in the process. The reason I think it could be in the cave is because of how much vegetation there is around the area. After this, we get a quick little tease of what may be either a Sharkticon or some other animal Cybertronian attacking a drone. Now, it seems that the war has officially begun, with large aerial battles ensuing, with a funny shot of Bumblebee discovering some new powers, like gaining a battle mask and knife hands while fighting. We then get to see both Optimus Prime and Bumblebee rolling out, seeing that they have finally mastered the ability of transformation. Behind them, we see a shattered and destroyed train, probably the result of the two Autobots' handiwork, trying to maybe cripple the Decepticon's supply lines. Because, not long after, we see another Cybertronian who seems to be chasing them, and if you watch closely, it seems to be a tank. This is most likely Megatron trying to catch Optimus and Bumblebee and eliminate them, since we see him fire a few shots. The last shot is just for laughs, showing Bumblebee go full commando style, slicing through the door, attacking computers, and cutting up the room, only to realize that this isn't the enemy and he just destroyed everything for nothing. But something interesting to note is that Alita 1 seems to be holding an unconscious body, probably being a Decepticon whom they took prisoner. My opinion of this film is honestly mixed. On the one hand, I like the animation. It's nice and crisp. I also like some of the designs of the characters. I mean, Alita 1, Bumblebee, and some others just look fantastic. Some do remind me of the Transformers Prime and Cybertron game designs, which I just love, since I think so many people favor those characters so much, including myself. I don't know why they named Megatron D16. I think I would have preferred his name to be Megatronus. Then again, this isn't the backstory where Megatron is a gladiatorial warrior. I just don't sit right with the way they've made it, story-wise I mean. I think it would have been better if it took on more of a serious aspect rather than a comedic value, because when you think of the origin of Optimus Prime and Megatron, you don't think of some buddy cop film. And the voice of Megatron doesn't sit well with me, I just can't get around Megatron being some goofy kid. Chris Hemsworth, however, I actually do think his voice sits nicely with the young Orion Pax. The plot of this movie, I don't actually mind. I do think it's a new unique way of showing how most Cybertronians, including D16 and Orion Pax as low level working bots, eventually rising to greatness. I guess I just hope that it would have ended out like the Transformers Prime version, where Orion Pax was an archivist and Megatronus was a gladiatorial warrior. Because that continuity properly represented the two beings. One who was a skilled warrior, hungry for power and rule over its kind, the other wanting peace for all life forms across the galaxy, believing that freedom is the right of all sentient beings. This is what started the war, and this is how the two brothers divided, eventually becoming sworn enemies. This version, I believe, is still one of the best origins. Another thing to add is that this movie is supposed to be the origin of the new Transformers universe. You know, the Bumblebee movie, as well as Transformers Rise of the Beast. I can't believe that. Personally, I won't count this as the true official origin story of these two legendary characters. As a standalone film, sure, I'll allow it, but I can't believe that of all the characters, a young Megatron acts like this. Am I excited for this movie? Sort of. I mean, it certainly seems to get interesting near the end of the film. I'm just not entirely sold on it yet, but the more I watch this trailer, the more intrigued I get. Will I watch this movie in theaters? Well, I guess we'll see, won't we? Again, this is just a reminder that this is my personal opinion. And again, I'm sorry for not uploading for a while. With school and everything, I'm a little busy. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, as well as turn on the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any new upcoming videos. I hope to see you in the next one, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Kill you! Get back! Don't shoot, don't shoot.